How to get your fear to just shut up. Hi, my name is Leah Chantel, and today I'm talking about getting your fear to shut the F up in your head. Because that critical voice that's constantly nitpicking and telling you you gotta be better or stronger or more successful is just a bunch of BS, right? It's a supportive voice that has gone rogue and has gotten too critical. And you need to be aware of anybody you follow on social media also who has that really critical voice. Like I can appreciate that they're coming at their discipline from a specific way and they're trying to offer support. So there's a good intent behind it. But when the voices in our life are overly critical, it can really mess with our heads. It can stop our process of creating and going for our goals, dreams, and ambitions because we're constantly worried about screwing it up. So we have to let go of that critical voice in order to create. Part of the process of creation is going back and editing at some point. Of course, editing and looking over your work with an analytical eye can be beneficial at a certain point of the process. But the trouble with that analytical voice, with that critical mind when you're going through your work is that if you're tearing your work apart from the get-go and saying it's not good enough, it's going to stop the whole process. And that can be true in anything that you're trying to manifest in life. If you're trying to manifest a relationship and you're just tearing apart the whole process, your whole strategy, and thinking, I have to be paranoid, I have to be cautious and make sure nobody's out to get me or hurt me. If you have that sort of paranoid, critical mind, of course, it's good to be strategic. It's good to be thoughtful and be cautious, but you can just tear the whole process apart and stop the whole creative process if you're too critical. So you want to pick times to be analytical and be strategic and go through your work after you've put forth your effort, when you're feeling a little bit more detached from your effort. Let's say, for example, you're trying to manifest a relationship. In the process, in the media process that you're trying to meet somebody or get to know somebody and have conversations, it's not good to tear yourself apart in the moment that you're trying to have those interactions due to insecurity because then your insecurity is going to show through. If you're going to make a mistake, make a mistake confidently and be yourself. And then a few days later, when you're a little bit more removed from the situation, you can quietly reflect and see if you were doing your best. And in those moments of quiet reflection, if you're very calm and you're meditative and you realize maybe you made a mistake at one juncture in your life and you didn't do the best that you possibly could, or maybe you were doing the best at the time, but there was something that you missed or something you could have done better, then at that point you can quietly reflect on it and journal about it and see how you could do better next time in a very gentle way like you're talking to your best friend very lovingly when they've maybe asked for advice or help on how to do better in the future. But don't go in into that critical mind and tear yourself apart right off the bat, right when you've just put forth effort to create something new in your life. Because then you're going to be very paralyzed by fear. You're gonna not be able to move forward. And I was realizing this recently when I was trying to manifest some new connections in my life, that I was getting very fearful and I was trying to understand why I was getting very fearful of the process. And it, I realized it was because I was being very hard on myself. I was being very critical and tearing myself apart too early in the process when I was really just getting the courage and getting the effort to go forward in creating something new. And it was really slowing down my momentum. And so in those moments, it's very important to realize that the process of creation is very different from analyzing strategy and realizing how you can improve and do better in the future. There needs to be a separate time for both. There needs to be a time for 
when you're generating your energy and generating your effort and doing your best to create on the job. And it's a very different energy from reflection and seeing where you can do better. And it's good to do both. It's good to do reflection. However, if you spend too much time really overanalyzing what you've done and criticizing, and I think a lot of people veer that way that they're really spending a lot of times in their heads criticizing what they've done and never moving forward, then you're never gonna get anything done. In fact, it's almost better to be leaning towards more action and making mistakes because if you make mistakes and you're putting forth effort on a consistent basis, then you're going to have opportunities to learn from those mistakes and have a real experience based on something that's going on in your head. Unfortunately, in this day and age, we tend to live a lot of our lives in our heads, especially with the technology resources we have. We can live completely virtually. We can just have connections online and purely live through maybe video. You know, it's a little better than just text, but the problem with that is that we don't really generate real-time feedback and real relationships and experiences in exactly the same way that we do in person. Having said that, we can reach so many people online and it's a great tool so we can use it and there's space for it in our lives as long as we understand that there is another area of our life where we need to have genuine, real interactions with people and we can't purely be living in our heads online. Having said that, based on our real genuine interactions in person, we can share our knowledge and experience online so it benefits a lot of other people. So we can do both. As long as we understand that we need to follow our intuition and not just our critical intellect, because if we all follow our critical intellects and everything we've learned through our very specific personalized intellectual histories, then we're all going to feel a little bit crazy and over analytical and we're not going to trust each other because my intellect is going to be pressed and molded very differently from your intellect. And if we're both coming at a relationship intellect to intellect, it's more likely we're going to have conflict and misunderstanding. And I believe that is probably actually the root of a lot of conflict and misunderstanding throughout the world. We're all so different in culture and in the ways our intellects are molded and pressed by our communities. Even if we're in the same country or the same religion, nobody has exactly the same family experience. And so we run into conflict when we're purely coming at each other intellect to intellect. It's like a car crash that happens. It's like we're both big machines that kind of boom, hit each other and we can't really resonate. We can't really reach each other when we're both approaching each other from a critical intellectual mind. And I believe that's one of the reasons why people really struggle to find really true friendships and intimate relationships these days or get along with their coworkers at work because everybody's in their own heads and being very critical of each other instead of really connecting on a genuine soul level from spirit to spirit. And when we use our intuition to connect with other people, then we see who they really are. We don't see all of their ego mess that's going on in their lives. We see their spirit. We see the parts about them that are beautiful and wonderful and that contribute to the world. And so we need to put a little bit more emphasis on that rather than emphasize our overly analytical, critical minds. I think we've been doing that for a few thousand years as a human race that we've really taught ourselves that the intellect is the grand prize, it's the ultimate tool that allows us to get everything done in life. And yes, the intellect can be a great strategic tool, it can help support us, but in the end, I believe that we're all spiritual beings and that's the way we need to connect, especially if we're going to avoid war and conflict and judgment in the world, that we need to be able to trust each other's spirits and see the goodness in each other. Otherwise, the world is just going to keep becoming worse because we won't be able to trust each other. We won't be able to build relationships or work together. So I know I started this video talking about how important it is to let go of your critical intellect when you're in the process of creating and to only really go back to it when you're in the right mind frame to edit your work. But it goes as far as even building relationships 
when we're doing it from a purely intellectual critical mind, it's very difficult to establish any new relationship. You have to really come from it from a place of spirit and being genuine towards other people because that's when you have the best chance of making a real connection with somebody else. I hope you're all having an amazing week and if you have any experience forming genuine bonds with people or silencing the intellect, I would be curious to see what your tips and tools on that would be in the comments below. I hope you're all having an amazing week and take care. Bye now.